Yo! JD here. And as you can see, we are back on F1 23 as always. And we are back with another video talking about the recent PSGL race at Jeddah. Many of you asked me to comment on this because I have seen quite a few people say that what Thomas Ronha achieved in this race was nothing short of incredible. And I have to say, I absolutely agree. You'll see throughout this race as we analyze the footage, we're giving my take on it, my feedback, and obviously as always, want to hear what your thoughts are on this. But the driving on display here, I think, is one of the best I've actually personally ever seen. And this is his qualifying lap, which was a 125.2. I think he could have actually gone quite a bit faster than this because this point here, I think this right left wasn't particularly optimal, but it's this next chicane, the one where Leclerc crashed a few years ago. Going through here, you can see he's one, yeah, one and a half temps up. As you go through here, he got a little bit too early on the throttle. And you can see he's lost about seven hundredths or more than that, almost a tenth of, actually, yeah, a tenth of a second through there. So this lap could have been even faster, which is pretty terrifying, not to say the least. But I think Thomas, the way he's been driving this game, I know he had some poor results at the start of this game, which is the reason why a lot of questions have been asked. Where has this pace come from? Because a 125.2 really should have been a point one. is really insane you going and I think he just got polled by a thousandth of a second from Wilson Hughes cool. Ian you'll be able to see the qualifying here one thousandth of a second attempt separating the top five absolutely insane but this is what happened at the start of the race could prove to be the the lasting fortune for them can they or should they carry out the necessary performances towards the tail end of the season as they make their way out to the final corner again now into the pits they go Thomas Ronha coming through so is Alfie Butcher so now the stops are coming in those on the softs looking to break away here Jack but the Ferraris haven't boxed here as Burrowman and Wilson Hughes but Alfie Butcher doesn't seem to be losing any time Manley's retired so there you go the strategy proving the case that Manley is safety unhappy car. and we've got a safety car he must have crashed Jack he did, he crashed in the first sector there, Great coming the out hearts. of the pits, cold tires, and that is a free pit stop for everyone. Imagine if you've just been in the pit lane. Now, it's a free pit stop for these guys out front. Jarno Watmir now can can try and see if he decides to box off those hard compound tires, but that is exactly what Jarno needed, and especially what Rasmussen needed. That is ideal for Freddy Rasmussen. So as you saw there, the safety car came out of probably the worst time ever for Thomas Ronhard, the best time for the likes of Jan Watmir. And just before we review this footage, only three drivers ahead are on older tyres. Josh Ardewu is on the softs, Rasmussen on the hards. Everyone else is on the same, that freshness as Thomas Ronhard. But before we are looking at his last in, we're going to look at a couple of clips from Mr. Jan Watmir, because I feel that this is actually very significant in terms of the outcome of this way. So right here now, Boromand and Alfie Butcher, those are two of the guys who have elected to stay out once the safety car was deployed just to maintain the track position. So he's got the fresher tyres. He wants to dispatch these two as quick as he possibly can because he wants to put cars between himself and the likes of Nicolas Onge and then get out of that DRS zone because DRS is just so, so powerful around here. So Yano is doing absolutely everything he can. But the expense of wasting all of his batteries. So he overtakes Alfie Butcher here, and with the freshness of his tyres, I believe he felt that he would be able to break the DRS of the cars behind because DRS does not get activated for three laps until after a safety car has come in. So he's going to be pushing as hard as he can then. Alfie has the oldest tyres, right? As you can see, he's actually asking his engineer if Alfie has the oldest tyres. So See, there are two cars between himself and Nika Zonge, who is on the next freshest set of compound tires, the same freshness as Jan Wapmir. So he's trying to break this DRS here, but at the consequence of wasting, not wasting, but using all of his battery. And you can see, as you come towards middle of that 18, he's trying to break out of that second of Alfie, and it looks like he is going to do it. 
before the detection point, which is just right about here on the exit of this corner. You can see the gap is 1.1 seconds, so he's managed to do it, but you can see he is going underneath 10% of the battery, which if you go underneath 10%, Wait. you're going to be losing a significant amount of speed. So in his mind, he was hoping, you can see the gap is 2.4, 2.3 seconds to Kazonga. So right now, it actually looks like it's paying off. But if we switch back to Thomas Runha, on lap 16, he was P16 in this race. And please, again, let me know your thoughts of this drive that he performs here. But I think from watching this a couple of times, a little bit of luck was definitely involved. But I think the driving on display, just some very intelligent driving. You see damage up ahead. That's actually from Lucas Blakely, who had a bit of an incident. So he's gone into the pit. So that is two positions gained in two corners up to P14 now and now he's got Dylan Warren an old foe who he probably doesn't want to really be coming across too often but you can see here he's just going to be really really patient these two guys are going to be going side by side and Patrick Sipos makes a bit of an error there so now that's up to P13 so he's already got three people as we skip on again towards the end of lap 18 still in P13 hasn't really used any of the batteries. So you can see there was quite a big gap between himself and Darren Warren. So I think just being very intelligent with the battery right now. So now he decides to actually use it. And if I'm looking at his qualifying, it looks like he's running a little bit of a high downforce. So he's not really gaining that much here. But what he does here is go to the outside of Darren Warren, getting the inside. You can see a McLaren's gone off, two cars gone off there. So he's got three positions in the space of two corners little bit of fortune there but he saw that gap around the outside made the most of it now he's got Rasmussen up ahead who is on the hard compound tyre so he will be slower at this stage of the race so again just an element of patience here and on the exit he just gets a superior exit and I don't think Rasmussen is really going to be fighting this too much but the thing with Ronkar every time he makes one of these overtakes he's able to be within the DRS zone of the car up ahead so you can see he's pushing again just to get within that DRS zone because the detection point is not here it's on the exit of the left hand you can see he's well within that DRS zone now and now he will be getting the DRS you can see he has got the DRS so skipping on to lap 20 again saving quite a bit of the battery here then everyone up ahead of him actually used theirs so again people going side by side Jake Benham squeezes Rubichero into the wall and that's another two cars another damage up ahead so absolute chaos so he's getting four positions there a virtual safety car comes out and this is actually a crucial part of this race because if we skip on board with Mr. Jan Otme you can see he's got a really big lead two second gap to Nikos Onge but this well, that's very nice he says it's very nice this is where I think he actually loses this Grand Prix because you can see the gap is two seconds so the delta is going to fluctuate but can you um, just warn me if you see his ending because uh, I've missed it quite a few times now and you can see the gap is almost up to two seconds of the delta the virtual safety yeah, car yeah. So just the, the second you see it will coming. be ending very very soon but you can see he's actually lost a second if you look oh, it's ending. on the top left there so you can see the safety car is ending virtual safety car is ending now and if you look on the top left he's actually lost one second to Nikos Onge, and I think if he could have just maintained that gap because he had still so much green on the delta, if he could have been one and a half to two seconds ahead, the ERS level was actually quite equal at this stage. Now he is actually within a second of Mr. Jan Otmir, so yeah, and um, I think this is another mistake Jana makes is that he actually just uses all of his batteries. So, in a way, I can actually understand because if you're out of the DRS here then that's going to be a big thing. And he was hoping that Longe, I believe his engineer was telling him that Nikos Longe, his ERS was actually quite low at this stage, pretty similar level to Yano. So he's going to try and just outpace him here and hope that he can keep out the DRS zone. But you can see his battery has gone all the way underneath the 10%. And it's really, really difficult. I know I have plus eight tenths on the Delta, but even if I fill that up, I would have been but it's really, really difficult to recover the battery around this track, which I do know all too well. So if we skip back on board with Ron Ha on lap 22, he's on about 70%. Yes, you can see all the guys up ahead of him. The red light, that shows that underneath 10% of the battery. So he uses the battery 
but then turns it off. So very intelligent driving, not overusing this battery, but going to here. He locks the rear, but somehow manages to slow the car down. Very impressive driving on the brakes. And I think one of the most impressive things about Ronha I'm seeing with his inputs is just his confidence on the throttle. It is just absolutely insane. And just his control with the brakes as well. Going to that turn one would have been so easy to run into the back of Barry Baramond. But he managed to keep his cool. And he managed to actually just control the car. Very, very impressive. But again, up ahead now, he's got Nico Songe, who is the next guy on the same freshness of tyres. But he's going to be easily within that DRS zone. He knows Baramond is running pretty low on the ERS because his red light was flashing just a little bit. So he thinks about getting a good exit. Now he's going to use it. Now he's going to get the DRS. Baramond's not really going to fight this. He's on all the tyres as well. And then he goes up into P3. But then you can see he's already within the DRS zone of Nicholas Longe. And all he has to do now, you can see, if you look up ahead, the red light is flashing. So he knows he's got about 30 plus percent more ERS than Nicholas Longe, which I know for my own league race around here, is a very, very good place to be. But you can see Yano is still out of that DRS zone of Nicholas Onge, but both of these guys are just running on absolute fumes. Nicholas Onge has absolutely nothing to defend with. And you can see, if you look at that delta on the top left, because of that straight line speed, having the battery over 10%, he's already within one second of Yano Opmir. And I think he's just managed to really just do his battery really nicely. I think the driving was on point. He used the overtake button when he needed to do it. Was a bit fortunate, well actually quite fortunate, with a lot of drivers just crashing into each other, but nothing too crazy. Apart from the move he did around the outside dinner Warren, which was a very, very good move. He's just been calm and collected and just really used his battery at the right time. Hasn't made any mistakes. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, that's impossible to go for P16 to P1 at this race. You can just see sometimes just being patient just being efficient with your inputs with the battery you can see where that gets you because right now he's just not even really going to be using the battery so a little bit just to get that momentum going but he knows that Yarno is under 10% of the battery so you'll be able to see Yarno's red light is already right, flashing right. so he knows he's in a superior position right now so off the exit of this corner does he even use the battery the answer says no he just doesn't need to so you'll be able to see on the straight seven tenths of a second let's see how much he closes in coming into the last corner. See, he's closed in about almost two tenths of a second here. The red light is still flashing from Yarno, so he is not just under 10%, but actually quite a bit underneath this 10%. So in a straight line, you're going to see how much Ronha will close in because of how much battery he actually has. He just going to save it, just going through into Sarsap. And right here now, I think the only thing that Yarno really could have done differently is instead of trying to break that DRS, just accept that the guy behind is going to get your DRS zone, try and save it, play a bit of chicken with the DRS, and then just try and be in P2 going to the last lap with a lot more ERS because he actually had quite a good amount, but decided to just gamble and risk it all, which in this case, I don't think has really paid off too well. So coming into here, last lap of this race, he knows again he's got about 30% more battery than you are at this point, using a bit of the ERS just to get as close as he possibly can. Coming through into this right left, trying to get a really good exit coming onto the straight. And now he's going to be using the battery, or just a tiny bit. And Yano, his red light will probably be flashing very, very soon. As we come into this right hand, you can see the red light is flashing now. It's coming to here. There's another DRS zone on the exit of this corner. He's got long game quite close behind him, but he knows he's got a lot more battery than him. And this is just going to be so easy. If you've got the ERS and the DRS, you can just see how much he's losing in that straight line. Giving a little bit of toe to Nicholas Onge as well as coming through into this last corner. I think that is just a tactical masterclass by Thomas Ronha. You'll be able to see his celebration here. We take it. In my opinion, uh, like I said, I think tactically I no to this, he did honestly. that to absolute perfection. And yeah, you can see the little bit of dismay from Garno Opne <laughs> here, the race results. I think there was a little bit of luck involved, but I think he just used the battery at the right time, made decisive moves when he needed to, and most of all, I think he was just very patient and just a very intelligent drive. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for the support. 
and I'll catch you very, very soon. Peace. Peace.